Okay, Brian, if you, if you want to take down the slide, we'll get started. Hey, hello everyone. I'm Paul Spruzzi. I'm the, uh, the programming director for the Mammoth Lake Film Festival, and I'm here with Stephen Orrit, the director of Accidental Climber. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, hey, what a what a fascinating film. Um, hey. Oh, sorry. I got Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Spruzzi. I'm the, I got some um, feedback here. the programming director for the Mammoth Lake Film Festival, and I'm here with Stephen Orrit, the director of... <laughs> I got to turn off the film when I get started with this. No problem. Oh, oh, and we have Marcus Nobrius is here as well. Hello. Hello, Marcus. <laughs> How are you doing? Where, where are you, where are you um, calling in from, Marcus? I am calling in from uh, my car. <laughs> I wish I had gotten, I, w I had to finish off this one job situation I was doing, so I am uh, stuck in my car right now. Oh, well, it's, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. How is everybody? Good, good, good. Good. Hanging in there. Where, where are you located, Marcus? I'm in LA. Okay. I'm, I'm, driving, I'm just off of Hollywood Boulevard right now. I was going to say, it look, looks about the same time out as it does for me. <laughs> yeah. I am Swedish. I picked up a, a something there. <laughs> well, well, let's let's talk about Ravage first. Uh, tell us, Marcus, uh, where did you first get the idea to make this short? Incorrect. <laughs> but um, the uh, when I first came back to America in 2017, uh, I had lived back home. For a few years. Oh, you're you're breaking up, Marcus. <laughs> Before I left America, in the early 2000s, there was a lot of uh, talk around uh, priesthood. A little bit, maybe that'll work. Um, uh oh, move your position, hopefully. Okay. Can you hear me now, Paul? It's, it's better now, yeah. Is that better, Paul? I was going to say, yeah. the, uh, when, I, when I came back to America after having been gone for seven years, and I was back in, uh, you know, in the early 2000s, I, there was a lot of talk around the priest abuse. A lot, you know, and I was very, uh, I thought it was really uh, wrong, of course. The priest abuse of, of kids is just insanely wrong because of... Uh, what the church represents in the world and and that that there's nobody stopping it right and then i come back to america in 2017 and the same talk on npr new pre new pre more priests have done more more stuff you know and this is 17 years later or 15 years later and and i'm like i felt like somebody has to say something and i wanted to so i, I started writing a scene all of, at first i just wanted to write a scene um more or less for practice, just just for practice between two characters in in um, in a power struggle and in a in a conflict situation. But then it, it turned into a church. It turned into a priest and a man, and that sort of it kind of just grew into what it was. You know, um, originally I, I wrote it for for practice, just to you know, because I was like, I want to write another scene because um, I, I write all the time. But I feel I always feel like I want to get a little better, and I want to be a little stronger on, on, on uh, dialogue and all that stuff. So then I thought I'd, I'd write that for practice. And uh, a little bit later, I realized it's a, it is a complete movie. It has a beginning, middle, and an end. And it's, but it's got one location. So it, it's kind of a simple thing to put together. So that was sort of where the whole thing came together. Yeah, uh, great. And um, so so this, this particular program is dedicated to uh, well, the mountain living and the, the, the culture of the mountains. And, and this, so the short was actually shot in the, in the Mammoth Lakes area or was it in Bishop? We, were, we shot in Lone Pine. Lone so Pine. Yeah, so that's right next to uh, Mojave, uh, the Mojave Dead or um, whatever, Mam Mojave to Mammoth. It's, so Mo Lone Pine is a pretty famous place. That's where Alabama Hills are, is or are, Alabama Hills are. And uh, they, um, that's where they filmed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of cowboy movies. And they also shot um, 
well, I shot, me and, and Susan Dalian shot Bite Me the year before. Uh, they shot, you know, the, um, what you call it? They shot this place called, uh, the movie called uh, Iron Man, uh, when they were supposed to be in Afghanistan, in the cave that's shot, the outsides of the cave is shot in that same area. Um, so it's a pretty cool area to be filming in, you know. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about your actors? Oh yeah, so we got Mike Kennedy, um, AKA Mike Dastro, who is an amazing uh, actor buddy of mine who is playing Rogers. And he uh, has, of course, we, we've been on stage for quite a few times uh, together up in Mammoth. And uh, he's also, he's pursuing a professional actor career. So he um, has been in, he was, he, he was in Shark Avalanche uh, which was shot in Mammoth area, uh, where he played the mayor. And, and he has been in a lot of local projects and also some projects down here. Um, and then we have, you know, Chuck Scatolini, um, our beloved Chuck Scatolini, because he, everybody knows Chuck, and he's been in pretty much every production in Mammoth for a long time. And um, I first directed Chuck back in 2005 when we did a, a feature or a full length play up in Mammoth that I directed. And uh, all my sons and he, he played the main lead. Um, so I, I go way back with both of them. And then the little guy playing, uh, his name is Rambo. It's really true, Rambo Rocky Knutson. And uh, his, his dad is a director out of Sweden who also works in LA. Um, and his, the, the kid just happened to be on vacation in LA. And I was trying to find a 10 year old boy because I, I had a hard time finding a guy to be in this kind of a movie. And, but I put it out on Facebook and he, the dad, Torkel, he saw it and he is like, Marcus, we'll be, we'll, we're willing to drive up to Lone Pine. Me and my, my wife and my kid are willing to drive up to, to Lone Pine and be in, you know, and, and Rambo can be in the movie. I'm like, oh, okay, that's awesome. So we, we uh, actually got extra hands on set for half the day. And uh, also uh, this kid who did an amazing job. So it was really fun to overall it was nice you know and you know it's nice to get on imdb with another project it's cool that chuck and mike have more projects on their their imdb pages and Ram and rambo now has a credit on imdb so i'm glad to to be able to you know provide something like that for for the people you know yeah. uh, i love working with those guys i know both mike and and chuck very well per privately and personally and and i love working with because this you know, Ravage is a pretty personal movie. It's a pretty, it's, it's, you gotta be fairly much into your own space. You gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta be fairly real in the, in the moment uh, when we made Ravage. And I love seeing how both Mike and Chuck. Marcus, I, I gotta jump Sorry. in. We have a limited amount of time and I wanna get to the other film, but oh. thank, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that. That's a great story. And uh, it's so cool how you got Rambo and, and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, thank you much so much for sharing your film with us. Cool. Um, yeah. So um, let's, let's talk, talk to Steven a little bit about um, Accidental Climber. So, um, so uh, what an interesting story and it, and, and what a turn it took. And I guess what was it like for you to, to, um, end up with, with a film that was maybe very different from what you expected, or did you expect a, a very different film? Um, well, there's no way we could have predicted what was gonna happen. Um, for those, if, if anybody out there is watching this and if anybody didn't see the film, uh, the, the film takes place in, in, in 2014, which is when uh, our subject, Jim Geiger, tried to summit Mount Everest. And that year there was a, <clears throat> an awful avalanche in the, Kumbu uh, Icefall and 16 Sherpas were, uh, were, were killed and the mountain was shut down for the first time in uh, 40 years, the south side. And um, uh, so there was no way we could have predicted that, but uh, the film when we started to make it um, was really, uh, we were following Jim and, and his, his pursuit to try and pull off something extraordinary. But uh, I was really just compelled by Jim because he's a very ordinary guy trying to do something extraordinary. But um, you know, we, we knew that if, if we hung the film solely on the success of, of getting to the top, uh, you know, there's, there was a, a good chance he might not get to the top. And so you know, therefore we were gonna have to kind of uh, live with whatever we got. And um, just, you know, just so happens that uh, 
two days into like the uh, practice climbs from base camp up to uh, the summit is when the avalanche happened. And so uh, the, the, the season on Everest was, was cut very short that year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting. There was a, a point early in the film where he's, he says that, that his favorite, <coughs> favorite part of, of mountaineering when you, is when you get in the truck and go home and <laughs> about you, what you've accomplished. And it seems to kind of tie into the, the lesson that he gets from the whole experience. It, it was, was that kind of a key to the idea of the film in the end? Um, yeah, uh, after, after like with, with, um, with some hindsight and, and, and about two years of editing, uh, this is the second feature doc that I've done and both of them have been exhaustive editing processes. Uh, and, and my process is really for editing both of those features that's where the storytelling and the, and the, uh, the craft came in uh, because when we were filming them, we really didn't know ultimately what storyline we were going to, going to follow, what was going to unfold. Uh, but, but after we um, had a cut of the film, a much longer cut of the film and we're, we're uh, uh, kind of um, uh, showing it to, to, to some you know, friends and, and colleagues that actually trust their opinions, took some time off and, and then stepped back after about six weeks and watched it. Um, realized that there was just all of this superfluous, superfluous stuff, storylines in the film that um, kind of detracted from Jim, and Jim was the essence of, of the film. So we really distilled it down to the most simplest form, which is really, as I said, this uh, ordinary guy trying to, to, to pull off an extraordinary feat. Um, but yes, uh, certainly the, you know, the lesson that he learned uh, after um, the experience over there is something that kind of is the, you know, the, the, um, the moral to the story and uh, ultimately is, you know, wh wh what completes Jim's arc as a character. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was curious, uh, why is it that it, it was only Sherpas that were killed in, in, the, um, in the avalanche? Uh, just, um, that's just how it uh, happened that day. Uh, it, it could have easily been a um, combination of, of uh, Western climbers, Western guides, uh, Sherpas, other climbing staff. Just so happened that that uh, this pocket of, uh, of of guys were in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was a um, a team of other of other guys ahead of them that was uh, mixed uh, some some Western climbers and some local uh, Nepalese climbers, and then uh, below them also was uh, was some of, of Jim's of the IMG climbing team as well. So it really that, you know, that's, it just was, was really just bad luck, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious, um, so his, his family and his daughter se seemed like, with, in, their, in their words, they seemed very supportive, but I, I saw some, like, body language that seemed like to be saying quite the opposite. Um, do you, how do you think they were about um, that time? Very, very perceptive. I agree with you. I mean, I, yeah, there's a moment where his daughter's talking about it and, you know, she's just sort of like reciting uh, you know, Jim's um, rhetoric, which is very, was always very positive and was always very, you know, if you, you, you can will it to happen. Uh, and she was just sort of repeating it as well. And we just, we hung on her a little few frames extra just because I, again, I didn't believe what she was saying. Obviously she's trying to be supportive, um, but uh you, know, you could tell that, that that there was there was a lot, a lot of fear and trepidation there. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, how, oh, we have a question from the audience. What was your personal experience like in Nepal? Um, it was incredible. Uh, I'd never been there before. Uh, I, I should say also that that I'm not a, I don't have a, a climbing background. So prior to this, uh, I'd never done much uh, intense climbing. Certainly not in altitude. And um, when we got into the mountains and got up about uh, up around uh, 13,000 feet is when I really started to struggle. And um, base camp's 18,000 feet, so we still had a ways to go. Uh, so my, uh, my, my, my personal, cl clinically, I wasn't doing so well for a few days, uh, but it's some of the most incredible, picturesque, majestic landscape that you could ever, ever imagine. And, now, as we're on this almost two week trek to, to base camp, you know, filming the whole way up, um, I just couldn't help think like, 
anywhere you point your camera is an incredible shot. So if, if this film does not have really epic visuals and you know beautiful landscapes and somebody you know didn't do their job, me. Uh, so I, I was I was very focused on that while we were climbing. But it's a really 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 incredible place, and uh, I, I I would urge you know anybody who's interested in uh, the outdoors climbing not even necessarily climbing but trekking there's a huge trekking industry over there just kind of you know with backpacking uh just a really 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 extraordinary place yeah yeah so um i guess uh we had, we had a question of um how, how did you conceive or get involved in the project was that part of the uh, the appeal of it um no uh it wasn't part of like that's not necessarily what drew me to the project we saw jim and i had a mutual friend uh i, I had finished a previous film and was kind of looking for another subject to do for a doc. And um, my friend said, you know, I, I met this guy who is trying to do something pretty extraordinary. And I, I, I thought I found him to, to be uh, uh, you know, an interesting guy. If you want, I'll introduce you to. So he did. We spoke over the phone and I, I asked Jim, Jim lives, lives up in Sacramento. And I asked him if I, I know, could fly up and we could have dinner. He said, yeah. And we went to dinner and about 10 minutes into the dinner, I was sold uh, just really by Jim. Um, he is uh, one of the most authentic people that I've ever met. And, and there's like absolutely no pretense to his authenticity. It's, it, it's not a put on in any way. It's just, he lives um, by, by example, because you know, he, he wants to show uh, people in his life that um, you can still uh, have a very high quality of life, you know, much late, later into your, into your, uh, 70s and even your 80s and um, I just thought that he would uh, be somebody worthy to, to, to hold a, uh, a feature length film and um, I asked him I said you know if, if, um, if you're willing to do this I'll guarantee you I promise you I, I will never be an impediment we won't get in your way whatsoever I'm never going to ask you to do anything for the camera uh, and you know he we shook hands on it and, and uh, that was uh, five years ago uh cool well so um we have a okay we have a comment i always admire the camera person who shoots these epic adventures and then um yeah i guess I, um, <laughs> um uh how, are you still in contact with jim and, and what, are, what are you up to now what's your next project um yes yeah, so jim and i are in contact often and we've become very good friends uh throughout this process uh you know he's extremely gracious and generous in terms of what what he allowed us uh to see and and, and capture in his life so we became really close um and last year really was uh, our festival run we started about a year ago so this is kind of the tail end of our festival run and jim and i did a number of festivals together so we saw each other a lot traveling doing that and then uh, the film was released uh, October 11th digitally, and so since then we've been doing a number of Zoom events, uh, promotional type of events. I haven't seen them in person, but we've been, you know, the same way everybody has, communicating through our screens. Uh, and you know, he, he's doing great. He's just he's so stoked on this whole thing that that you know that that anybody uh, would really want to watch a film about his endeavor. Um, and, uh, and then as far as me personally, um, I have a, a, after filming Accidental Climber, I, I went to Poland and shot my first narrative feature. I spent uh, two and a half years um, kind of off and on in Poland making my first narrative feature that was uh, supposed to be distributed in, in theaters in, in June in North America. It was gonna be coming out. Obviously that didn't happen. Uh, so, um, we uh, were sitting on the film. Uh, the film is called My Name is Sarah. The website is My Name is Sarah. You can see it online. It's based on the true story of a young 13 year old girl who, who survived the Holocaust in, in uh, uh, Ukraine by um, posing as a uh, Orthodox Christian and uh, basically hiding her identity that way. And the film will be in theaters uh, probably late spring or early summer next year once uh, we, we get back to some semblance of, of normalcy and there uh, is a cinema industry back um well wonderful well um we'll thanks. be looking forward to that and uh thanks thanks for sharing your film and thanks talking so to us much. About and uh being part of mount Flix film festival hey, you got it i'm so you know obviously disappointed we all can't be there in person but i think you guys are doing a great job now i uh, 
just all the credit in the world to what you guys are doing, what you pulled off. It's really impressive. And thank you so much for, uh, for showing, showing the film and having us. Thank you, Steven. All right. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Bye. Uh -huh.